G'day. So you're about to watch uh, Sunday Too Far Away, which uh, is one of my favourite movies. It's one of my favourites because it was very early in my career, but also because it was so accurately portraying an Australian way of life. I remember when I was first handed the script, I recognised what it was about because I'd been working uh, out on a sheep farm out in Western New South Wales when uh, that strike occurred. In fact, uh, I had learnt to shear, but not very well. I was the only one of the actors who had learnt to shear, and of course, before we started the movies, uh, all of the actors being, playing shearers were given instructions by a shearer. Uh, and I had some knowledge of it already. Uh, but it was extraordinarily accurate because Johnny Dingwall, the writer, had a brother-in-law who was a gun shearer. And he was telling him all of these stories about what happened with the strike and one thing and another. And he wrote it all down. John Dingwall wrote a whole lot of stuff for DV4 and uh, yeah, for other parts of television, but this was a fair dingham story about real life. And uh, when we were rehearsing for the first time, first time reading through the script, at the end of the read through, the director, Ken Hannum said, so anybody got some questions or something to say and people had things to say and he said, Jack, you got something to say? I said, well, all I can say, Ken, is if we're caught acting, we're in real trouble because this is so fair dinkum, this script. All you have to do, there isn't one improvised line in the movie. All of it is directly from the script. It was so accurate. I recognised the characters, the place, the attitude, all of it. And when we uh, started shooting it, there were, we had, you know, an advisor, the uh, guy who taught actors to shear and doing the right thing there. And he also played uh, one of the rouseabouts, the one that comes into the shed and kicks the young fella out and puts his case out on the veranda. And uh, <laughs> he said at the end of it, he said, when I saw you blokes, when you first came in, and you were learning to shear, and I was talking to you, and I thought, these blokes will never be shearers. Well, we're finished now, and I want to tell you something. You're bloody shearers. You are. <laughs> it was a great compliment coming from him. It was uh, a delight for me because we'll probably never make another movie like it. It was so early in the renaissance of Australian film that there was this script about who we are, uh, about a, a, a story about a way of life that has probably disappeared in a lot of ways, but that I'd grown up with it. I knew that way of life and I knew the attitudes expressed in the film. And uh, so we made this movie and it's like a docudrama, really. And, and when it was done, it was very successful. Uh, I remember taking it all around Australia to, to sort of sell it to people. And we, had, we opened it in various towns all over Australia. And we had, in uh, Sydney at the opening, we had a truck outside the State Theatre with a, a flat top truck uh, tray and with a shearer on the back with a portable machine shearing a sheep outside the theatre. Uh, so these were early days. But when it, when it was successful, then people started talking about, you know, what we should be doing. And, what we should, and so we, we ended up making more sort of international film about international concerns. Not that that's wrong, but 
we didn't come back to making movies about what it is to be an Australian and what our culture, subculture, whatever, what our way of life is until much later when we began to make some movies about our interaction with the original Australians. Then, for the first time, with the Indigenous directors, we started to get fair dinkum about that. I suppose it was just before that that we made you know, Rabbit Proof Fence and uh, Fringe Dwellers and stuff like that. But in the, between that and Sunday Two Fay, far away, they were all uh, pictures about us being uh, international. Anyway, it's a beautiful movie for all sorts of reasons. I hope you enjoy this really great restoration. Good on you. G'day. G'day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so here we are. You've just seen the movie. Yeah. Yeah, just yeah, I, I enjoyed seeing it again when I when uh, it was first uh, digitized and the uh, film and sound archive ran a screening down at uh, in Sydney. Yeah, it's yeah, great. No, yeah. I think they sent an email about that too at the time when they did it. Uh, come to think of it, yeah, yeah, it's um, yeah, exactly. It was done at Commonwealth Hill, um, of course, wasn't it? Yes. Um, yeah, the, have you ever rolled an FJ? <laughs> uh, uh, I haven't. And uh, the man who rolled that, a young stuntman uh, from South Australia, he hadn't rolled an FJ before either. And uh, he'd not rolled a car. I had rolled a car because I went to Peter. Uh, Peter Stunt School and uh, very early in my career and on weekends we used to go out and with specially constructed ramps roll cars so because it's quite a common uh, stunt but uh, he hadn't rolled the car and uh, the, it was so wet out there on his way home the night before rolling the car he rolled his own so uh, he got the feeling, and I think that made him quite nervous when it came to the stunt. Yeah, right. Ah, oh, damn, eh? Um, does anybody have anything they'd like to ask? Yeah. Yelling out. Where was the shed that they did the hearing? South Australia, Commonwealth Hill. It was. It's, um, it's up near, it's up towards Flinders Ranges in the Jack. Yes, it is. It and it it was the same shed that they'd used for the movie The Sundowners, oh, right. uh, shot back in the fifties uh, and uh, or early sixties maybe. Um, and uh, they still had the tally of the different guys up on the on the board. Yeah, yeah, I do tend to. They do tend to leave things once the shed's finished until they come back the next year, generally. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, um, yeah. The other guys, the other actors, and everything. Um, but they they would have enjoyed it, no doubt, as much as what you did, I imagine. Um, so oh yeah, well, it became it became you know a, a, a little as it tends to with a cast and an ensemble piece like that. There isn't anyone in the starring role in a lot of ways. Um, and so we really became a, a little group of actors. Uh, and uh, Ken Hannum, I, uh, nobody else had a, a caravan, but I had learned through bitter experience that if you don't put it in the contract, you won't get it. And, and I knew we'd be out there in the open. So we had a little caravan as part of my contract. And it became, of course, a place where uh, all the other actors and would get together with me and we'd talk about uh, the scenes. 
and uh, Ken Hannum, uh, we were all sitting in the caravan having a yarn, uh, and Ken Hannum came to the door and knocked and said, uh, I'd just like to uh, talk about this uh, next scene. And I said, just a minute, I turned around and I said, meeting. <laughs> and we got all the actors together and they said, Am I going to let him in? Yeah, all those in favour. Oh, you know, so we turn around and let Ken come in and talk to us. It was uh, he was meeting the actors, playing the shearers full on. It was great. So brilliant, mate. <laughs> um, did, do you think the other guys enjoyed hearing as much as what you did? Oh, I, I, I don't know. Well, they certainly enjoyed the movie. Yeah, they certainly enjoyed the movie, making the movie, and you know they're uh, they're uh, they're doing a bit of shearing, but not a lot. You know, old uh, Reg Lye, who played Garth, you know the guy that I abuse about being an old drunk, and they put him in the back. Did you put they put him in the front of the buddy Ute? You know, you'd have done it for the cocky. Um, he. Uh, when we were rehearsing, he said, what do you do if a shearer is left-handed? The contractor said, oh, we put him down at the end of the board so he's facing the other way and not you know, interfering with the uh, stand of the other shearers. Reg said, okay, I'm a left-hander. He was smart. He only had to, he, he went down to the other end of the board. All you could see was his back, and all he had to do was that, you know. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty much what he did by looking at the two. <laughs> That's right. Look, look, I'm a shearer. <laughs> he was a lovely man and a fine actor. Yeah. But the reason yeah. they, the reason, of course, the reason they put him down the, um, down the end is so they didn't interfere with turning around when, um, on the, on the, that's um, right. And the last side with the other leagues and facing each other and running the ambush. That's right. The yeah. Yeah, but um, they sort of got away for that in late years. Yeah. Um, yeah. And there are plenty of good left handed shearers. So yeah, they've like got to face the other one. Yeah, exactly. Um, yep, yeah, sure. Yeah, how much was the cuts on the sheep for actual cuts and how much for the makeup? Oh, they were real. Um, question lady just asked is how much, how, how many cuts on the sheep were real and how much were make up. And I just told her all they're real because that's what happened. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's just. They are real. Uh, and that's why, uh, there's that, all that stuff about how you've got to be very careful with the rams. Yeah. Uh, and in studs, uh, they still, uh, the special studs, they still shear their top rams with the hand shears, the old click go the shears, hand shears. Yeah, true. Because uh, you can guarantee there won't be any cuts there. Yeah. Unless I think a wrong part. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, uh, but if, you know, there's a weird thing with uh, uh, with the Merino, they've they bred them for to be quite wrinkly. There was a, a, a time when they were too wrinkly. Yeah. But, um, you know, they, they see it as having just more skin area and therefore more fiber, but it can really get in the way. You shouldn't be, you shouldn't have too many skin, skin cuts if you're dealing with crossbreds or anything. Yeah. Um, Otherwise, um, oh, okay. Um, did you hear that, mate? No. Uh, the question was any thoughts on the missing footage, um, which I don't know about. So, no, nor do I. No, oh, right. Yeah, he said apparently forty-five minutes is missing, but he might have been. He might be actually referring to the outtakes and stuff and the and the rushes that weren't used. I imagine. Oh, okay. Yeah, right. Um, he said um, two characters that weren't fully developed were the rouseabout and the girlfriend. 
um, the, the cocky's daughter. And apparently there's 45 minutes of footage um, to deal with all that that um, didn't get used. It was not there in the original cut of the movie. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, well, yeah, that I and uh, the, um, I've never seen it. Uh, I remember that they uh, they did. Uh, yeah, they did have scenes in which something was more developed, but between them, nothing uh, exciting, though. Uh, <laughs> you got a laugh out of that. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah. Oh, look, lights on in the hall. Yeah, you can see everyone now, mate. Hey, everyone's there. G'day, g'day, g'day. <laughs> Uh, as far as I remember, yeah, well, I was only nine or something when it came out. It's nine, maybe ten, I think. Yeah, um, yeah, the lady was asking how long the shoot was. Um, how what? How long the shoot was, mate? Ah, it was, uh, altogether, it was, uh, 11 weeks, I believe. Yeah, 11 well, weeks. All out of Commonwealth Hill. Yeah. Yeah, right. And yeah. second part of their question was, um, was it a big hit at the time? Yeah, yeah, it was. It, uh, it had a really uh, top audiences all around Australia. It, uh, uh, there weren't a lot of Australian movies around, I can tell you. 19... You were in most of them, likely. <laughs> <laughs> and I was in most of them, yeah. <laughs> Uh, anyway, Peterson I'll... came out before that. Yeah, yeah, just the year before. I think it was seventy four. Yeah, the year before. Yeah. Um, David yeah. Williamson's first uh, screenplay, Peterson. Yeah. I've got to watch that again at some point too. I've been meaning to do that for a long time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, how many... Do you remember how many sheep they ran through? Like, how many did you guys actually shoot? In no, I have no idea, mate. I have no idea. Yeah. Um, no, not really. Um, <laughs> yeah. We could cover down the shoot, but it wasn't uh, wasn't a lot, mate. Yeah, I suppose you. Yeah. Yeah, you need to do what you need to do for the yeah, for filming. Yeah, you do. You don't want you don't want to be uh, overdoing. And then the the shearer, of the professional shearers would come in. And shear a group of sheep so that when you look next back at the pen at the end of the afternoon, there'd be quite a lot of sheep there. Yeah, right. Mm. Um, how big was the crew? Do you remember? Uh, it was a, quite a big crew. I saw a sort of standard film crew for the period. You're pre digital, so uh, you've got a you know, focus puller, and you've got you know, either. I don't know the exact number, but it was a standard film crew for the time. So, yeah, I don't know. I really don't really have a number, but you'd have to go yeah, check check uh, check the uh, credits at the end. You'll have the entire number. Yeah, <laughs> you have to go over that again. Yeah, sorry, it's got a bit of crackling on the microphone, then, mate. You're right, mate. Yeah. Um, the food was <laughs> Hopefully the food was better for the crew. <laughs> Talking about uh, getting, rid of, getting rid of Queen. Oh, the food was not. Well, yeah, the food was better for the crew. <laughs> it was considerably better. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's, that's a that's a uh, that's a great uh, great moment in uh, in all of that. And true, mate. The truth. Uh, yeah, yeah. They, they, there was a saying uh, out in the bush, you know, there are cooks, cuckoos, and willful murderers. Which <laughs> one are you? And, you know, the first one was a willful murderer, and then the next one was a cuckoo. <laughs> <You know? laughs> 
But some cookers are good cooks. Yeah, all true. Yeah, it's funny. Uh, the most unlikely people are cooks, you know. Um, yeah. And a couple of the ones that, like I had, there's an old guy, Frog, uh, worked at Yanga every year. He come from Bell Randall too. But um, yeah, he was uh, just a short little weedy guy, and he could fight too, little bastard. And um, by geez, he was a good cook. Good Party. cook, eh? Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. And shearers are, are fussy about the cooking because they pay for it. You yeah. pay the cook's wages. You don't. You, it's not. That's not part of the cocky's contract. Yeah. He's paid for by the shearer, so he'd better be bloody good. Yeah. <laughs> Besides the fact he needs good food too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yes, sir. All right, yeah, that's a good question too. Um, do you remember at the time how did it go overseas? Did it go past England or um, and did they understand the humour? Because back in those days, I remember even used to get bloody dubbed just like Mel's movies did and stuff like that. No, uh, Sunday, Sunday too far away didn't have a great... It was okay in a couple of festivals. Uh, but it didn't have a great run outside Australia. Nobody understood any of it. It's like, you know, uh, <laughs> I couldn't understand. In, it It was at the Georgia Film Festival in uh, America, in the southern states, and it was in the foreign language section. <laughs> you know, I could understand what people were saying. It's like, but there was a, a guy, uh, uh, one of the uh, guys in, the, yeah, the uh, guy Rousey, who was uh, sort of instructing this year, is too, he uh, he said something when we were all around the table that I've never forgotten. And so the people, when they say, to, you know, can you say something Australian to me? He said, aeroplane us down a hunk of dodger, would you? Uh, uh, I don't know what it means. <laughs> Uh, yeah. That's the sort of thing they'd never get in a hundred thousand years, I can tell you. Mm -hmm. uh, the lady asked, when did the strike begin? Um, which was 1955, of course. Well, I think it ended in 56, didn't it? Um, yeah. Yeah. And I, uh, 50, uh, it was still going in 56. Because in 56, I was working on a sheep station out in western New South Wales and the strike was on and uh, we were uh, we were shearing sheep ourselves. Uh, I mean, I was a station hand. It was pretty slow at shearing sheep. But uh, all the wigging and crutching was done by us. And uh, not long after that, they uh, strike finished and uh, the shearers were available again. Yeah, right. We had that, I don't know. Yeah. Oh, we're okay. It's just, um, it just dipped for a second, mate. It's going right now. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Sam? Yeah. Okay. Um, are you excited, or I don't know if excited is the right word, but um, about the future of Australian film and the move lately towards more Australian content? Um, oh, yeah. Well, I think that's very important. That's always been an extremely important uh, aspect of the industry because in, unless you uh, do legislate for a level, of, uh, a level of Australian content, you really just become a, a service unit for overseas filmmaking where it costs less to do that work here. Um, so if you want an Australian film ministry, you're going to have to legislate uh, <laughs> content. Yeah. yeah. But, um, do you know anything about the restoration of the cost of the Um about how it was done, did you have any involvement? Um, Bruce just asked, did, uh, do you know anything about the restoration, how it was done, and did you have any involvement or any input? I didn't have any involvement or input. 
I do know the process. Uh, the uh, the original, uh, which was beginning to decay, uh, is uh, <clears throat> digitised. Really, the uh, the footage is, is run through, and the uh, the images are recorded as digital signals, and then just like when you have a take a photo on your phone and you want to take a look at it, you can up the brightness or the detail or whatever. That's what they do. And so you have a restored image. Um, that's all I know. Fair enough. Somebody else with a hand up too, I think. Thank you. <clears throat> Yeah, cool. Um, uh, probably had a couple of other things I wanted to bloody bring up and ask too, but I forgot what they are, mate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. All oh, right. Yeah. Did uh, the gentleman said, did he see correctly in the credits that you sang the theme tune? I actually did. It's the only time I've ever uh, been recorded singing in a movie. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they composed the song for it and then asked me would I uh, sing it. So we did a recording session. Yeah. Yeah. The song was played on uh, radio and uh, reached uh, uh, number six in the uh, charts or whatever at, at the time. But there was a lot of promotion of the movie. You made it on the countdown then. Too right, mate. <laughs> oh, dear, mate. Rock, but no roll. Yeah. Um, well, you while you were out at Conwell Hill, did you get out of there very much? Did you head into town? Like, I'm not sure where the closest town is to that, actually. No. No, we went, we all, I mean, you know, movie days, long days. You get up in the dark and you go home in the dark. Yeah, true. Well, we were in a uh, motel in Port Augusta. We drive out to the location, just magnificent country to drive out at that early in the morning. I, I can remember a couple of mornings with the the sun rising and the moon setting in the same sky. It was just fabulous. Yeah, true. I miss all that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, Jeff Burton did a really good job cinematography as well. Yeah, he's fabulous. And uh, that was early in Jeff's days. And then later when we did uh, The Some of Us with Russell, he was the co-director on that. And right. there's a scene in that where uh, I've got my back to the camera and I'm making some food on the stove and stirring the pot. And he got me to wriggle my bum. So it was a sort of a, an <laughs> in joke about the, but I didn't have a towel that fell off. There you go. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Going back to the wash tub. <laughs> that would have been too pointed a scene there. Oh, dear. Um, is anybody. Got a last one or anything? Because we've got to wrap it up because the next session has to be. Yep. Anyone got anything they want to throw in? Thank you. <laughs> hey, thank you very much. Thank you all very much. Yeah, and mate, thanks so much for getting back and doing this for you. My uh, pleasure, mate. My yeah, pleasure. pleasure. I'm pleased that you were there and enjoyed the movie. Yeah, all no, of us. I love seeing the damn thing. I'm probably sorry. I haven't seen it that often, but, you know, I've seen it two or three times over the years. Yeah. And it's always one that I like to get back. Well, to it looks like that's a nice little theatre, too. Uh, yeah. It's, uh, what, 57 seats, Sam? Is that right? Yeah, 57 seats, mate. It's great. Yeah. All right, guys. I'll, I'll drop out of this now. Thanks yeah. for coming. All right. Along. Good All on you, best, mate. Eh? All the best, Sam. Yeah. Cheers, Yeah, mate. cheers, Jack. I'll, I'll speak to you. Thanks, mate. Yeah, right, bye. Yeah, cheese.